The do's of assisting with panic attacks. A panic attack is a sudden urge of overwhelming anxiety and fear that can occur anywhere at any time. If ever observing someone experiencing an attack, do not panic. The person suffering the panic attack does not need the extra stress of someone else panicking and screaming at them. Instead, there are some helpful ways to assist someone through a panic attack. If it is the first time the individual is experiencing this, seek medical attention. Having a panic attack can be overwhelming enough, but experiencing it for the first time makes it even more stressful, especially if the individual doesn't know what's going on. Although a panic attack is non-life-threatening on its own, it's best to call for emergency medical attention if in doubt. This is especially important if the person has asthma, diabetes, or other medical conditions. Ensure the individual experiencing the attack is breathing. If the individual is standing or leaning against an object, ask that they sit down. This will make breathing easier and ensure minimal harm if they faint. The person may remain unresponsive or hyperventilate too quickly and fall unconscious. If this is the case, lay them down, listen to their breathing, and check their pulse. The average adult heart beats 60 times per minute, so try to keep track of the clock as you take their pulse. If they're hyperventilating or breathing too quickly, ask the individual to take a breath with every other number you say and begin counting to 10. Start counting at a slightly sped up pace, but as their rate of breathing falls, decrease their speed of counting until the individual is breathing at a regular pace. If they're not breathing at all, calmly ask them to attempt to take a single breath. This request may have to be repeated several times and once they respond, continue to make this request. The goal is to have the person breathing on their own. Ask grounding questions. This is a frightening time for the individual experiencing the attack and confusion can often come with the panic. Asking simple questions can help ground them. Grounding questions require that the individual answers without having to overthink. For example, what is your name? Where are you from? and what is your favorite color? These questions provide an anchor that the individual can focus on. If the individual is unable to provide verbal answers, then ask yes or no questions. They still require that the individual focus on an answer. And be sure to give them time to answer each question and do not overwhelm them or pressure them into answering quickly. Patience is extremely important here. Ask if the individual is okay with being touched in a yes or no form. If the answer is yes, Slowly move towards the individual while remaining in their immediate range of eyesight. Once close enough, you may calmly lay a hand on theirs. Any more contact should only be initiated from the individual having the attack. If the individual requests not to be touched, then simply continue to ask grounding questions. You can also repeat where the individual is, work, school, etc., and that they are safe. Do not ever touch a person who's experiencing a panic attack without asking and receiving permission to do so. In some cases, the situation can get worse and their panic can increase if the individual is touched without permission. Do not leave the individual struggling through the panic attack alone. One of the scariest parts of a panic attack is the inability to focus on all parts of reality. The individual knowing that they are not alone during this struggle can make resurfacing from the panic attack easier. 